Maxx, you can go above and beyond and stay under budget. Find the gifts they love for less and gift to the max. For my best skin, it's Olay. Better than a basic moisturizer, Olay starts working day one to visibly smooth and firm for a lifted look. In one month, skin looks up to 10 years younger. Results you can see in one jar. Olay. Now, tomorrow on ET Only, we are on the set of The Santa Clauses with Tim Allen. Plus, Hawaii Week continues with some fun in the sun with our Magnum PI pal, Stephen Hill. We want to leave nature the way we found it. And on that note, in Hawaii, it is customary to have new productions blessed in a special ceremony. So we are joined now by Hawaiian cultural practitioner Nalani Ke'ale, who will bless our production today. Oh, we are morning. so glad that you are here. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy. Yes, indeed. You're going to do a chant and a prayer or an oli and yes. a pule. Yes. Kia kua mana loa, mahali a oino ke ia la, e ho'opo mai ka ia makou. Mahalo Aku for this beautiful day. We ask for your blessings at this time upon ET. We ask that you please bless our- Happening now. A horrendous child abuse case involving a pot of boiling water. BCSO deputies say methamphetamine was also involved. How that baby is doing next. It's a 2016 capital murder case. Jacob Brownson accused of killing three people. Today is jury selection as he is finally going to trial. We'll have a recap of this case coming up. Another cold front headed our way this week. I'll let you know when it arrives, what it means for temperatures and rain chances. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with a devastating child abuse case. A one-year-old baby girl dropped off at the hospital with severe burns all over her body. Yesterday, we told you about the search for the mother, Amanda Mann. Well, that woman has now been found, but the details on the many criminal charges she and her partner now face are disturbing. Courtney Friedman with the horrible injuries the doctors say the one-year-old endured, but also where the other five siblings in the home are now. We don't know every detail of what happened in this RV Friday night, but there have been specific terms to describe the outcome. Some of this stuff is unimaginable. Anger and emotion from Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar as he told the press about a child injury case he called disgusting. He says it was Sunday morning when 30-year-old Amanda Mann dropped her one-year-old daughter off at University Hospital with severe liquid burns. It appears that a, a boiling hot liquid was either poured on the baby or spilled onto the baby. And even more disturbing about this is that we found out that this actually occurred on Friday evening. Almost 48 hours before the baby was taken in for medical care. Man lives in the RV with her partner, 30-year-old Dustin Lawrence, and six children. Two-month-old twins, a two-year-old, six-year-old, eight-year-old, and the one-year-old baby burned in this case. Her parents uh, chose to not um, seek medical care, medical attention for her, and ex instead thought that injecting her with methamphetamine would help with the pain. When a family friend finally convinced them to take the baby to the hospital, doctors found around 15 injection sites on her body. The six-year-old also had meth in his system. These two monsters were more concerned with them getting away with this and not getting into trouble than they were for the safety of this little girl that was absolutely in a living hell. Investigators say the children were living in filth and looked starved. We have literally thrown every possible charge we could at these folks, and, and I hope to God they stay in jail for the better part of the rest of their lives. Both Mann and Lawrence have been booked on four charges, including endangerment, abandonment, and injury to a child, all second and third degree felonies. These kids are in for a long road to recovery, but thankfully they're in the custody of the, of the state at this point. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Now, in the same news conference, another terrible case, the sheriff sharing that they are also now investigating the discovery of a two-year-old boy who got shot by a gun. This one, Friday night, deputies got to the Montag apartment complex on FM 78 in Converse, and they found 22-year-old Ashley Lepon on with a severe head injury. Sheriff Salazar says she was highly intoxicated and either fell out of a car or was hit in this parking lot. But at the same scene, deputies found a two-year-old boy with a bandaged leg revealing a gunshot wound. The child survived that wound, and now he and his mom are recovering in the hospital. Salazar was told conflicting stories, but so far sort of landed on this one.
There was a gun laying very near where the two-year-old was, and the information is that the baby picked up the weapon and somehow shot himself in the leg. I, if I'm being honest with you, I don't 100% believe that that's what occurred, uh, but that is a distinct possibility. 21-year-old Kobe Sullivan was at that party and told investigators he saw the gun on the table. He's been charged with making a firearm accessible to a child, injury to a child by omission, and tampering with evidence for trying to clean blood up in the apartment. 25-year-old Lorenzo Williams also arrested for failure to ID to a police officer, essentially giving a fake name. They are looking for two more suspects, as well as the gun that shot the child. And this next story just as appalling and unsettling. Police arrest a man for allegedly pouring scalding hot water on a disabled woman. And if that wasn't awful enough, he's then accused of setting her on fire twice. Investigators say 26 year old Carmen Carney arrested this weekend, charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and injury to a disabled person. According to an arrest affidavit, police arrived at that home last month, spoke to the 36 year old woman who they say has autism. She reportedly told police while she was being bathed, Carney poured pitchers full of scalding hot water over her, causing severe burns to her neck and back. He was allegedly angry with the victim for soiling herself and allegedly said she needed to be punished. The affidavit then reportedly details how Carney forced the victim to stand in a corner until her legs were swollen. He allegedly then poured rubbing alcohol on her, struck a match and tried to set her on fire. Police say she fell to the floor, putting out that fire. They say Carney poured more rubbing alcohol on her and set her on fire again. Police say Carney and the victim have been living together for about a year. His bond set at $250,000. And new at five, police are looking for the person who assaulted a student at Lee High School, according to a Northeast ISD spokesperson. The victim said they were cut by a friend after a disagreement. That student taken to the hospital. The district says its own police and San Antonio police do not believe there's a threat to the school at large. Students were held for dismissal, but have since been released. A man accused in a seven year old triple murder case finally getting a day in court. Jacob Brownson is accused of killing three men in a Northside apartment complex. But in the time since 2016, he's got some new charges, too. Eric Hernandez with what happened back then and why it's taken so long to get to trial. Jacob Brownson was only 24 when he was arrested and charged with the shooting deaths of 21-year-old Pedro Garcia, 22-year-old Matthew Travis Martinez, and 24-year-old Anthony Rodriguez. The three men, who were roommates, were found dead inside La Paloma Apartments on the north side near North Star Mall on September 27, 2016. Three months later, in December 2016, Brownson would be charged with capital murder while he was already in the Bear County Jail on a separate charge of aggravated assault. According to the murder warrant, Brownson allegedly committed the murders while his wife and three kids waited in a van outside. In March 2018, Brownson would make the news again. This time, he was one of three inmates who escaped Bear County Jail. All three were arrested 40 minutes after escaping, and Brownson was now facing an escape charge. And in 2021, he added two more charges while behind bars, deadly weapon in a penal institute, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The COVID-19 pandemic and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez recusing his office from the case have caused further delays, and after rejecting a possible plea deal last week, the case is heading for trial and a jury will be seated today. This is a capital murder non-death case. So what that means is that if Brownson is found guilty, he would automatically be sentenced to life without parole as the death penalty is not on the table. Testimony is expected to begin tomorrow morning. At the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Tomorrow's election, Tuesday, it's your chance to cast your vote in this year's election. On the ballot, there are just a few local seats up for grabs and more than a dozen Texas constitutional amendments to vote for. Just scan this QR code on your screen and get a complete ballot breakdown and you can find out more information on the polling places that are near you. If you need a ride to get to your polling site, VIA is going to be providing fair, free rides for Election Day. It's part of their longstanding VIA to vote program to ride for free. You have to show a valid voter registration card to the bus operator. And to plan your trip, you could just use the VIA Transit app. 
Clashes with the judge, demands for a jury trial, former President Donald Trump's five hours on the witness stand today in his civil fraud trial in New York was memorable. Rena Roy in the courtroom as the judge tried to rein in Trump's answers and the former president tried to fight back. Former President Trump in the hot seat in New York State Supreme Court getting questioned by prosecutors in the civil fraud trial against him, his two adult sons and the Trump Organization. The tension rising in the courtroom, Trump giving lengthy responses on the witness stand. Judge Arthur Engeron getting increasingly frustrated, saying Trump was not answering the questions from prosecutors. At times raising his voice at Trump's attorney, saying, I beseech you to control him, adding, if you can't, I will, even threatening to excuse Trump. He also struck out some of Trump's answers from the record. On the stand, Trump saying this is a very unfair trial, and I hope the public is watching, calling it a political witch hunt. It's a very unfair situation. This trial is ridiculous. New York Attorney General Letitia James accusing him and his eldest sons of inflating the net worth of the Trump Organization's assets by as much as $2.2 billion. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters are the facts and the numbers. And numbers, my friends, don't lie. The judge has already agreed that James has proved her case on the key issue of fraud, determining Trump overvalued those assets for a decade to get better terms on loans and insurance. In court today, Trump admitted to overvaluing two properties, but claimed that those numbers were later corrected on financial statements. Overall, Trump denying any wrongdoing. The attorney general is seeking $250 million in damages and is hoping to bar Trump and his sons from doing business in New York. And Trump testified on and off for about five hours before wrapping up his direct examination and stepping down from the witness stand. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We have the high thin clouds and in some cases high thick clouds streaming overhead, but I do think they will make for a colorful sunset in parts of South Central Texas. Not for everybody, not where they're really the thickest, but maybe in the hill country and just west of town. You'll get some good color out there. Of course, sunset now at 544 p.m. All thanks to the time change. Temperatures, upper 70s, low 80s, Floresville, Panna Maria 82, 76 in Bernie, 78 in Maiko, 80 even right near Lavernia. This evening, pretty quiet, straightforward, just those high clouds streaming overhead. Mid 70s at seven o'clock, by 11 o'clock we're at 70 degrees so unseasonably warm tonight but we do have another cold front to talk about it's going to make it here on Thursday we'll talk about the impact to temperatures and rain chances in just a bit thank you Adam we're going to take a look outside right now a lot of traffic here backing up at highway 90 at Meadow Creek uh, you can see the traffic coming into town not so bad but uh, people trying to uh, move west there is a problem uh, we're not sure if there's an accident or something further up down the road. We're going to try and investigate. In the interest of transparency, we bring you this next story. KSAT reporter John Paul Barajas arrested early Sunday on suspicion of driving while intoxicated, a Class B misdemeanor. According to the blood draw warrant from the San Antonio Police Department, Barajas was pulled over for speeding and drifting outside the lane of traffic in the 11,000 block of Interstate 10 just before 2 a.m. on Sunday. SAPD said he refused a breathalyzer and was taken into custody without incident. Barajas has no prior criminal history in Bear County. His arraignment date is set for next month. Next, dropping your cell phone is inevitable no matter how careful you are. That's why most of us use a phone case that protects them. With so many to choose from, we reveal how to pick the best one. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. The feds are awarding the San Antonio Police Department a multi-million dollar grant to help with community policing. One neighborhood leader wants to know how that money will be used to help build trust. Coming up, you'll hear what the San Antonio Police Chief has to say about that. Voters will head to the polls tomorrow to decide the future of several state amendments, and one of them focuses on the state's water supply. We break down Proposition 6 and what it means for you. Plus, it is complicated. It's a very complicated system. Texas public school funding. What a voucher proposal on, on the table in Austin means. Plus, we're explaining how public schools get their money right now in light of that. And how a lawsuit filed by Edgewood ISD helped revolutionize the way schools are funded 
today. It's all in a new case that explains and it's coming up today on the news at six. Thank you, Myra. It happens. You fumble your phone. It falls to the floor. Phones are expensive, so you want one that can handle everyday use. 12 of your slides. Marilyn Moritz finds out how consumer consumer reports tests phones for durability and how you can pick out a good protective case. Apple's iPhone 15 Pro Max isn't cheap, so when people complained online that it broke easily. We fact-checked those complaints, and in our updated bend test and our standard drop test, we found no structural issues with the 15 Pro Max. The other three iPhone 15 models passed the drop test as well. Like they do with every phone, Consumer Reports dropped them 100 times in a tumbler lined with stone to simulate dropping a phone to the concrete from the waist high. All phones get the rain test, and those that claim to be water resistant get the dunk test. And folding phones? They're opened and closed 30,000 times. Besides choosing a phone that passes the durability test, there are other ways to protect your precious device. Well, with phones costing more than $1,000, it may make sense to get a case or a screen protector to protect your investment. Here's what to look for in a case. A raised edge around the screen to protect the glass from a face plant raised edges around the rear camera housing to protect the lenses, and padded corners, preferably with an air gap to protect from impact. A case with texture or grip is less likely to slip from your hands. And remember that military grade may just be a marketing ploy. And look for a warranty. OtterBox, LifeProof, and Spec all offer one. As for screen protectors, if you've got an adorable reason to think your screen is in danger, it may be worth considering. If you or your kids are rough on your pricey phone, it can make sense to go ahead and buy the insurance. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam, we have had a lot of clouds today, just a few glimpses of sun earlier. Yeah, and these clouds, you know, they're, they're the high clouds, they're serious, but at times they're th they're pretty thick and they really give you that uh, high overcast and that's been coming and going and that's the trend with the pluma moisture coming off the Pacific. We're going to get to that in a moment and how it's going to help us in terms of rain in just a bit. First of all, our headlines warm through Wednesday, cold front hits on Thursday, promising rain chances on the way. Actually, a few opportunities for some good rain. Let's start with our temperature trend. It's going to stay warm about 10 degrees above average for Tuesday and Wednesday. Cold front arrives on Thursday. Temperatures dip into the mid 70s, 74 the high. That's average for this time of year. But behind that front, get ready for the temperature drop. We're talking afternoon highs in the low to mid 60s Friday through this upcoming weekend and even by this time next week. So here's the big picture. These are those beautiful cirrus clouds streaming overhead. We have a few features we're watching, not just the cold front that'll be headed our way, but this upper level dip in the flow in the Pacific Northwest, bringing that Pacific moisture on shore and energy and lift the ingredients that you need to generate rain. That's going to be headed our way along with the upper level energy and moisture we already have streaming off the Pacific, moving over Mexico and here into Texas. So those clouds that we have overhead are directly coming from the Pacific Ocean. And that's that mid and upper level moisture that just helps to saturate the atmosphere along with the mugginess that's in place right now coming off the Gulf of Mexico. So let's go to our future cast. Those upper level ingredients and the cold front move in on Thursday around midday. Rains first starts in the hill country and out west near Big Bend, and then it moves elsewhere and gradually spreads across south and central Texas. We're not expecting much in terms of storms. This is more so just showers coming and going, especially enhanced Thursday night and then starting to taper off throughout the day on Friday. As for put rainfall accumulations and the actual potential out there, we could see pockets of an inch or more. I think that exists. Not everybody's going to get it, but I do think it's within the realm of reality here and possibility that several neighborhoods could easily see an inch of rain. And this is just one computer output that you see here. But that's just our first opportunity for rain. Not only that, but by Sunday and Monday, 
We've got more scattered rain likely in the picture. 79 right now, dew point of 60 degrees. The dew point is what's key because the temperature and dew point are going to meet tonight. That means the air is saturated. More fog to start the day tomorrow. Fog 63 in the morning. That'll impact the morning commute than sunny in 84 by the afternoon. We'll be in the 80s, but again, not for long. Get ready for the big changes this week. Coming up at 6, we'll talk more about this front and potential rain over the next seven days. A lot to watch. Thank you, Adam. All right. Well, if you were disappointed in the Spurs game last night, they have a chance to bounce back tonight. They do tonight at the Indiana Pacers. And you know that just you had a feeling that was a bummer of a flight yeah. from here to Indianapolis for the silver and black, right? So now they're going to get tested tonight in their first set of back-to-back -back games this season. And in high school football, the Burbank Bulldogs want to keep their special season going. They made plenty of history, folks, coming up. One shot. One shot at this. Don't miss out. Hands up, Rick. Coach getting his Burbank Bulldogs ready for some playoff football in big board sports. The Spurs are now in Indiana, getting ready to face the Pacers tonight in the first set of back-to-back -back games for the silver and black this regular season. Last night, the Frost Bank Center, Wimby and the Spurs fell to the Raptors 123 to 116 in overtime. Toronto overcame a 22-point hole to come back and win their only regular season appearance here in the Alamo City. Victor Wimanyama had 20 points, five block shots, and nine rebounds. So tonight will mark his first time to face off with the Eastern Conference Indiana Pacers. You know. Every night is a, is a challenge and, you know, I still got a lot to prove to my teammates and my coach, so I'm just trying to do the dirty job sometimes and give it 100%. Pacers will host the Spurs tonight at 6. The 3-3 three three Pacers last played at home Saturday night, losing to the Hornets 125-124. The postseason is here, everyone, and the big game and big game playoff coverage this week. We'll see the Burbank Bulldogs hosting the Veterans Memorial Patriots in a Class 5A Division II by district contest. The Bulldogs finished the regular season 9-1 overall, 8-1 in District 14 5A2, with their only loss coming to Alamo Heights, who won district with a perfect mark. Led by head coach Michael Mole, this year's squad is just the third in Burbank history to win nine games in a single season, and now they want to beat the Pats and advance. It's very special, you know, new coaching staff and new players, you know, just trying to adjust and just transition into a better program and instead of like a dynasty and a legacy, it's very special and yeah, I just can't wait to, you know, win the playoff game. A uh, very special season. I know it's a very special season for my seniors. Um, that's why we tried our hardest in going 9-1 and one. and this playoff one, we got to get this playoff one. So. Uh, it's very special, you know, this school doesn't really see that much success and it's very nice to do something like that for this school. I'm as excited as can be. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't wait to get out here this morning. I feel like they're going to feel the same way. Uh, got a couple text messages yesterday on a Sunday from kids and stuff. So I know that they're thinking about it all last night. Veterans Memorial Burbank is our game of the week Friday night at 7 at the SAISD Sports Complex. And coming up at 6, you'll hear from the Patriots. Burbank's coach has to get coach of the year. I would think, Oops. right, man, that's really. <laughs> Annie, Annie came in late also. A big turnaround. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. We talked about the morning fog. Prepare for it to get in the way of the morning commute in some parts of our area tomorrow morning. Notice the future cast for visibility down below three miles at times. Really depends on exactly where the thickest fog sets up, but that's something to, something to prepare for, for not just tomorrow morning, but Wednesday morning as well. Much cooler Friday through the weekend. Good rain chances by Thursday. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for watching. See you back here at six.